In this video, we're gonna study LMN cost codes. Now the good news about cost codes, they couldn't be easier to set up. It's so simple. It's very quick to add a cost code and to edit a cost code as well. But you might not know what a cost code is or how to use it or how it works in LMN. That's really the only tricky thing about cost codes. So we'll spend the first couple of minutes of this video walking you through that, and we'll show you how to actually set one up. So let's start. What is an element cost code? Well, think of it this way. When you have a company and in your accounting, you want to track your sales and your expenses so that you know your profitability. Now, as a company, that's a great thing to know. We want to know if our company's making money or not. But if I'm not making money, or even if I am making money, I probably want to know a little more information, like what parts of my company are making the most money and what parts of the company are not. And that's where cost codes come in. Cost codes are like divisions or departments within your company so that you can analyze different areas of your company separately. A list of cost codes might be something like install, maintenance, irrigation and lighting, snow and ice, turf care. Any sort of department or division that I might want to break out separately, I could set up as a cost code. Then what happens in LMN is as you're estimating, you have to pick the cost code that you want to use for that part of the estimate. What that'll do is when you export to QuickBooks, it'll link the revenue for that piece of the estimate to a QuickBooks service item. You can call the QuickBooks service item anything you want, but generally it's a very similar name to the cost code. And in QuickBooks, each service item is tied to a QuickBooks chart of account. So ultimately, the cost codes in LMN are a way of getting revenue and expenses into the correct QuickBooks chart of account. Your cost codes link to QuickBooks service items, and QuickBooks service items are all tied to charts of accounts. That's how an estimate revenue from LMN would get in the appropriate revenue account in QuickBooks. And the same thing applies for timesheets. When we're booking time against a job, every task has a cost code. The task cost code determines what QuickBooks service item it goes into, which determine where the payroll expenses for those timesheets get booked in our chart of accounts. That way we know for each division or department in our company, how much did we earn in revenue and what are we spending in labor? Now, of course, if you use QuickBooks service items when you're entering your vendor invoices, that gets even better because then you know what you're spending on materials for each department, what you're spending on subcontractors and rentals and any other way of breaking it down. And what you end up with really is a simple chart of accounts for your company, but by using service items, a more detailed breakdown of each division or department within your company. So you can really see where you're making and losing money. Hugely valuable concept. Now, the reason we use QuickBooks service items and not link directly to charts accounts is because if you're using job costing reports in QuickBooks, the best reports are driven by service items. So you can run all kinds of nice job costing reports that are broken down by service item, not by chart of account. Service items also allow you to keep your chart of account simple. For instance, to take a really simple example, you could just have one sales account in your company in your chart of accounts, but you could have QuickBooks service items that would be things like install revenue or maintenance or snow so that you could have more than one department as a service item, but they all link back to the one sales account. So if I ran my chart of accounts, I'd just see my total sales, but I could run reports on service item and I would see where those sales are coming from on a department by department basis. So LMN has estimates, timesheets, and invoices that sync to QuickBooks. So the revenue from estimates and invoices or the expenses from timesheets are all linked to LMN and to cost codes. Those cost codes are linked to QuickBooks service items, and that determines what sales account the revenues will go into, or in the case of timesheets, what payroll account or payroll department the timesheet expenses go to. So here's a simple example on screen. Here I've created four cost codes, if you will. Install, maintenance, irrigation and lights, and snow. Each one of those cost codes, I will be able to see what I've sold in sales, because your LMN estimates or invoices will invoice the revenue to those correct sales accounts. And when we book timesheets in LMN, the cost of every hour on those timesheets will get booked to the labor expense for the right department. And at the end of the year, I'll be able to look at each department and figure out what departments are making money and which ones are. Now there's lots more information about syncing your QuickBooks and LMN together in those suite of videos. So this is just meant to be an overview, but let's dive in now and see how to set up a cost code. 
To set up your cost codes, you're gonna to go to your estimate menu here, and you're gonna click the cost codes menu option down here. Adding a cost code couldn't be easier. Just simply go up here to the add new button. You're gonna put a name on the cost code and optionally an external identifier if you need it. For those not using QuickBooks, you might wanna use like an account number or something here, but if you're using QuickBooks, you really don't even need this. Now our sample database comes with a few set up for you, but obviously you wanna set your own. You may not do all this work and you do, may do more than this work, so you can expand or contract this list however you see fit. I put numbers in front of all my cost codes. The number is our department number. It just makes it a little more organized for staff. It also helps when you're entering things in QuickBooks because by quickly just typing the number, QuickBooks will jump its drop-down list right to the correct account. That's all we've done here. Installation, grounds maintenance, enhancements, snow and ice, turf care, irrigation, and unbillable or overhead. This one we may never have estimates or invoices for, but you may have timesheets for, so it'll allow you to track exactly what you're spending on unbillable time. That's a good example of a list of cost codes. Again, yours might be shorter, yours might be longer. I advise you to start as simple as possible. And if you decide you want more information later, it's a lot easier to expand than it is to contract. So keep it simple to start with. Now, if you have any questions about cost codes, be sure to hit us up on live chat or goelmn.com slash help, or send us an email at advice at goelmn.com. We'll be happy to help you understand what cost code is and how to effectively implement it with QuickBooks. But before you do that, you may also wanna check out the QuickBooks videos where we have a lot more detail on how to add and how to set up cost code linking between LMN and QuickBooks service items. Thanks for watching.